Hey guys, this is another Beatles fan and here we are with um, a very special video because I've been to Paul McCartney's 2024 Got Back Tour um, leg. I was in Sao Paulo on the concert of the 15th of October, of course in Brazil, and here are my impressions on it. Um, it's been a while since I've, I've been there, it's been almost a week, but it's been a busy week, man, and so I've only had time to talk about it properly now, and I gotta tell you, if you don't wanna um, hear me ramble about it, it's amazing, go watch fucking Paul McCartney, that's all you need to know. Um, if you do wanna know what ha happened, um, this is a point of view of someone who's been four of Paul McCartney's Got Back 2023 20, concerts. It was my 11th concert in general. I've been going to Paul Paul's gigs since I've been um, since I was a, a little boy because of my dad, especially. He loves the Beatles too. Um, so this is where I came from, and especially last year um, on the the huge Got Back tour leg he did in Brazil, I was able to meet him, and there is a video on, on the channel about it. And I also went to the hot sound, the sound check. That that was also a really fun experience. Um, but anyway, I was only able to attend one concert of the 2024 leg, and it's the God Back Tour. So you know, um, talking about the gig in itself, it's the same old you'd expect of a Paul McCartney concert and of the God Back Tour. Um, he changed a couple of songs here and there, and I'm going to get into it. But before that, um, I want to show you guys the shirt. I love concert shirts, and this is my, my, my the one I got. So it says, Got Back 2024. It has the, all the dates and the cities here. And it's a, a youngish poll kind of looks like Quarryman Paul, and I just love it. It's not a white one like mine here. This is a 2019 um, concert shirt of the, is it Out There Tour? I'm not sure, but this is the new one. It's kind of a cream color instead of the, the this pure white. And I actually didn't buy this. I got this as, um, I, I met a girl there who worked for the ticket sale company that sells tickets for Paul's Brazilian gigs. And so she quizzed me on Paul and she kind of picked the wrong person to do that because uh, of course I run a Beatles channel. It doesn't mean much, but I did get 9 out of 10 questions. So um, they got me the shirt and I, I got to choose it. I got to choose my correct size and that was really fun also I went what is called a, a premium um, seat it's not a seat actually um, we're standing there and you know we get a chance to get really close to, close to Paul we just gotta um, show up a bit early and that's what we did so I, I did get this wristband and also, since I got the shirt for free, I also bought the poster. I hope you guys can see it because it looks really cool. And of course, you can see my John Lennon tattoo, uh, a smile for the thumbnail. And it's always really fun to go there. And this poster looks really, really good. Um, I think it's well known, especially for Beatles fans, that Paul is a huge bird watcher and he's kind of a bird enthusiast, I'd say. Um, of course, we have Blackbird, we have Bluebird, we have Jenny Wren, and so I, I'm not sure if the artist knew that, um, but that, I believe, is a Colombian bird. And so it's the poster for Latin America. If it's not clear here, Latin America 2024. So if you guys attend the European leg of the tour, which is gonna be Madrid, 
Paris, London and Manchester, please do let me know what the poster looks like because I, I think this one looks really good. I still don't know where I'm gonna put it. Maybe I'll put it here, but I don't think so. There'll be maybe too much information. There's a little space there behind my closet, so maybe it'll, it'll be there. Anyway, let's talk about the gift, shall we? I was a bit skeptical at first, I gotta say, um, not because I, I didn't think that the concert wouldn't rule. Um, on the contrary, I knew I was gonna love it like I did every single one of them, but it, it was gonna be my fifth of the God Back Tour concert, so I was a bit worried that it'll be more of the same and I was totally totally wrong because we show up early as I mentioned it's not a seated spot so we have to stick around but number one the Beatlemania in there um, I don't know if you guys know that but Brazilians love the Beatles and they love Paul McCartney and it's just an incredible energy especially because he didn't um, he didn't play a ton of gigs here in Brazil this time around, only three gigs, and it was the first one in Sao Paulo, which is Brazil's largest city, so I had an impression that, you know, the biggest, the hugest Beatles fans in Brazil and even abroad were there. We were next to a couple of Chilean guys who'd come from Santiago, and... They were also there, so I did feel like it was full with that Beatlesque energy that is really irreplaceable for me as a Beatles number one fan, right? And it's probably this, the place in the world where I feel like I belong most, you know? And you can feel the love for Paul and for the Beatles and for music just um, shining in there. So that was really special. And that already made it worth it because I talked too much. I made friends and I made some friends there and it was super fun. But then, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Paul McCartney's concerts, but a video shows up of a building and the building starts to rise and Paul's life kind of um, rises with the building with some pictures some videos um, and starts to play some Beatles and Wings and Paul McCartney solo songs that um, he's not gonna play on the gig and at that time where the video starts playing and everybody gets a real sense of important something important is coming up somebody who is really important to western culture is only a few minutes away from blowing our heads off um, on stage and blowing our minds off right um, sorry about that but and then the video ends and there's a huge Hofner bass and it shines and then boom Paul is there and I love no matter what people say of course I'm I'm young I'm younger than your usual Beatles fan I think um, but I love being really close of course I don't get too up close because I know some people who waited in the queue since 5 a.m. and I wouldn't do that just to get first in line but you get real close to Paul and it's super fun because I don't feel like you watch a gig if you really don't get close to it and it's kind of a bad thing to say because some people can't afford the, the more expensive tickets but I mean that in a way um, especially on gigs, on rock and roll gigs, where people play everything live, it's really important to see the band. I feel like that's um, that makes the show a thousand percent better. And I've been to Eric Clapton 
I don't know if you guys want to hear my take on Eric Clapton's gigs. I've been on two of them and I, I was really blown away by seeing him up close and seeing him play up close. It's a totally different experience. But then he comes up and it's the same old got, got back tour gig and it does not matter one single bit because Paul still rocks. His voice is there. There's some people who says that he doesn't have a voice anymore and yeah, he kind of struggles a bit, but it's there and when it, it's not there, Abe really helps him out with the backing uh, vocals. They're not backing vocals actually, they're doubling what Paul sings, especially on more energetic songs like Hard Day's Night, which was the opener. Um, let's talk about the songs in itself. So, it's the usual Got Back to Her set list. I'm not going to mention it uh, in its entirety to you guys here. But what he did play differently was he always starts up um, either with Can Buy Me Love or A Hard Day's Night. And he chose A Hard Day's Night, so it's my favorite. So, I was really glad he, he played that. And instead of She's a Woman, which was usually the fourth song of the the show if I'm, if I'm not mistaken he switched it for drive my car he got rid of she's a woman and he played ride my car that was insane and super fun it, it was kind of surprising because i wasn't sure if he was gonna play she's a woman he did play drive my car but on the 16th on the next night that i didn't attend he played all my loving and that was even more special and that was it talking about of course there was now and then um but let's talk about now and then at the end um on the topic of new songs these were the two ones that vary at the end sometimes he switches birthday for i saw her standing there he didn't do it then um he did play birthday and on the next night he didn't play i saw her standing there he played the tripper which would be really really great to see and i know people who went on the 15th and on the 16th of october on the two sao paulo nights and they mentioned that they preferred the second set list but of course it's a matter of preference right um it it was heavily emotional for me i'm talking about the usual ones something um, here today but of course and that's what I'm gonna wrap this video up with now and then. Paul started playing it and I gotta be honest, I did not expect him to play it before this 2024 like started. Of course, when he re rehearsed it in Montevideo, we all knew that he was gonna play it. And that was kind of the end of the surprise for most people, including myself, but it's still on a, uh, they fit it on a, a really good piece of the, uh, of the gig. It's right after here today, so it's still on that John Lennon homage thing. But then it cuts to New, and New wasn't really, in my opinion, a good follow-up for here today. But now I think it is, because it's the kind of song that, not many people know, but at the same time, it kind of resets the party vibe and then straight in a later Madonna. So that worked for me. And about now and then in itself, the arrangement sounds great. It was wonderful. The, the pictures and the video that plays along with it, it, it was totally incredible. Even though I don't like the now and then music video, I did like it. Um, on the show I think it looked really good and it was really emotional of course I cried I've seen a ton of people crying it was a really special moment really and I, I do think that even though some people might not like now and then they should experience this moment because it was magical and I think that's it guys it's been a long one a long video a longer one than I usually do, but I just want to chat with you guys about the comeback tour. 
did you watch it are you gonna watch it please let me know down here before we wrap up though i forgot to mention that it's it was my 11th paul mccartney concert and it was probably the best sound i've ever heard so um hats off to the paul mccartney sound guys um because it was blasting on helter skelter i thought i was gonna lose my hearing but in a good way in a good heavy hitting rock and roll way that was super badass and Paul's bass was clearer than ever. It, it's really, it, it's already a privilege being able to listen to Paul playing his Hofner bass. And he still does great licks. He still um, likes to play Being for the Benefit of Mr. Kite, which is a song he himself considered challenging on bass. Um, so that was really fun. I, I do hope Paul comes back. Um, it's always a matter of when is um when it's gonna be the last gig right because there's gonna be one and especially for us brazilians it doesn't seem like it's gonna end because for whatever reason paul loves brazil <laughs> but you know it's getting closer by the minute unfortunately and we should appreciate that he's still with us and we shouldn't take that for granted because he's the biggest um, composer maybe of all time definitely of the 20th century along with this guy here with John right anyway that's it guys I'll see you later thank you so much please let me know what you think down here all right bye see ya